Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So we're doing another unboxing and I was really not expecting these to show up for some time. Uh, I got a shipping notification for all of these and then within one or two days, they just showed up at my doorstep. So the drivers and the delivery people really hustled. <laughs> Uh, so these top four are from Barnes & Noble. This one is obviously from Barnes & Noble as well. Uh, really excited about this one. And then this bottom one is from Right Stuff. So let's get to unboxing. first volume is the apothecary diaries volume 7 i have caught up to this latest volume and i'm obsessed i remember receiving several comments encouraging me to start reading it and you all were definitely right uh, mau mau is a, such a great female lead as is the rest of the cast of characters i'm so so excited for the anime announcement it looks so good from the visuals the animation music and the little bit we got of mau mau's va uh, it says it's slated for this year, so I'm for sure going to keep on top of the release date. Next volume is Something's Wrong With Us, volume 12. I've talked about this many times on my channel by now, and I'm also caught up to this latest volume. If you like a lot of drama, mystery, love rivals, villainous characters you love to hate, <laughs> uh, some pretty confectionery sweets, you would enjoy this series. I covered up that back summer because it highlights a pretty big spoiler. These next couple ones are volumes to fill in gaps in my Nana collection, which I think after this, I'm only missing volume 12, which I just got a notification that it's on its way, finally. Uh, but here is volume 8. I love this inside illustration. And then Nana volume 10. I don't know if I'm recalling this correctly, but was Nana going to start streaming on Netflix? If so, I'm really excited. It's been so long and I'd love to watch it again. On to the next package, and I've been waiting to finally get this mini box set. I binge read Sweat and Sober on the time that it finished a little over a year ago, and then was about to buy the singles when the box set got announced. I'm glad I opted to just wait for this because it looks like it's printed perfectly. Because you know how Karancha tends to print volumes a bit wonky, like uneven heights and misaligned spines? Uh, and then this includes some scented stickers, which I'll show in a second. Uh, but it centers around this couple, Asako and Kotaro, who work at the same cosmetic company that also creates soaps. Uh, Asako is incredibly self-conscious about herself because she naturally sweats a lot, so she tends to use a lot of deodorants and fragrances to mask any body odor she feels she has. Uh, however, Kotaro, one of the developers who creates fragrances, which is perfect because he's very sensitive to smells, he catches Asako's scent in passing and gets inspired. Uh, from there, he asks her to basically be his muse. <laughs> Obviously, she's taken aback, but eventually it works out with him. And many of you probably already know about this series, but in case you don't, I know it all sounds a bit odd, but it really doesn't turn out too strange, and the relationship they develop is so lovely, wholesome, very communication focused. Uh, it's a lot of positive things from start to finish. Uh, and then here are the extra sticker sheets that were included with the box set, and they're scented stickers. The description didn't really say what they smelled like, and I kind of forgot they were scented. So when I removed the plastic wrap, I was like, what the heck is that smell? <laughs> this one smells like smoked meat or something. And then it's weirdly neutralized because this one smells lemony. And I'm just glad we're slowly getting extras with manga. But now onto the Right Stuff box, which has a variety of manga. First is On or Off Volume 2. This is a mature rated BL, so keep that in mind. I remember when I got the first volume and read it, it wasn't totally there yet for me, but after finishing this volume 2, I ended up binge reading the rest of the series. So safe to say that I enjoy this manga a lot. Next is Cherry Magic, a 30 years of virginity can make you a wizard. <laughs> and I picked up volumes 1 to 5. Uh, I was surprised I hadn't picked this up yet since many people vouch for this series in that it's not explicit for a BL office romance uh, despite the mature rating. 
I can't say since I haven't read this yet, but I'm very curious to read what kind of thoughts these two have for each other since there's a mind reading aspect to it. Next is My Summer of You, Volume 2, uh, which is also titled The Summer With You by Nagisa Furia. I have read the first one and this continuing volume. It's such a cute story and I'm glad it's ongoing because I feel like these one shots we often get with BL is sometimes too short, uh, but the way Wataru and Saiki develop and maintain the relationship as they begin college uh, just makes me feel warm and fuzzy. Uh, they're still trying to figure out the dynamic between themselves while also being busy with work, but they're very sweet and understanding about it along the way. Next is another BL. It's a two-shot anti-romance by Shoko Hidaka. Uh, this only has the first volume, so I am waiting to receive my volume 2 pre-order, which won't be for a very long time, October 24 supposedly. <laughs> but the cover print is really nice with some glossy accents over like a soft matte finish. Uh, but just gonna double check to see if the rating is okay, which it's for older teens. Uh, but I have read this volume and it centers around two childhood friends that have lived together for six years and counting. Uh, throughout that time, there's been a shift in the relationship, but not enough to take the next step. Uh, so this is about how they go about doing that, if they do it at all. Uh, it's pretty introspective with a lot of doubt and questions, but I'm interested to see how it'll end. Next is this two-in-one omnibus, seven days, Monday to Sunday, with story by Venio Tachibana and art by Rihito Takarai. I've also read this, and it's an interesting approach to something like a contract relationship. Uh, there's Toji, who's known to only go out with someone for a week before finding himself in the next relationship. Uh, in comes Yuzuru, who's often misunderstood as he offers to be next in line, but is surprised himself when Toji accepts, uh, which begins the change in their perceptions of each other. Uh, overall, it was a nice read. Here is the next installment for Classmates, which is in this two-in-one omnibus format. This is honestly such a beautiful printing. The Blanc subtitle, the front and back cover art, uh, just the use of black and white. It's so elegant and probably one of my top favorite prints now that I have it. Uh, but I have not caught up to this volume yet. I actually still only read the first volume, but I'll pencil it in for a read-through. Next is Crossplay Love Volume 2. I got Volume 1 from a friend, which I'm super grateful for because they said they really enjoyed this series so far. I haven't started reading it yet, but I think the way this goes is that one guy is in love with a girl who's actually a guy that's more comfortable when he's dressed as a girl at the maid cafe where he works. So this will be interesting. Next is Tokyo Aliens Volume 1 by Naoe, published by Square Enix. This was a total cover art buy. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of sci-fi aliens in general, but I pushed all of that aside because Naoe's art is way too gorgeous. I have read this volume and basically Akira is caught between an encounter with his classmate Sho and an alien on the train. Uh, it turns out Sho is part of an agency that regulates and oversees uh, the balance of alien presence in Japan. Uh, from there, Akira unsuspectingly becomes involved and pulled into a world and life he didn't know existed or needed his help. Again, the art is stunning from the character designs, action sequences, background art, everything. Uh, I already went ahead and ordered the second volume along with a special edition Japanese volume that I'll show later in the video. Uh, but on top of that, I also ordered the G Fantasy magazines that have Amamiya on the cover. Uh, he's got to be my favorite character, him paired with Hyogo. Next group of volumes are Bungo Stray Dogs 1, volumes 1 to 3. Uh, this spinoff is by Neko Kanai, and I think they're all so adorable. Uh, it seems like a pure comedy slice of life version of the original series, or maybe there's some original stories in there. Uh, but all in this sort of chibi format. Uh, it'll just be fun to read when I don't want anything too complicated or just looking for a chuckle every now and then. Look at all of them tucked in their personal futon prints and crazy Chuya all stretched out and Akutagawa wide awake. <laughs> 
Next is the second volume of Shadow House by Somato, published by Young Press. Another that I haven't started reading yet, but it seems really interesting despite the description being a bit peculiar with this relationship between a living doll and their shadow. I have no clue about this series other than that or what the purpose of this relationship might be, but looking forward to diving into it. Next is Bungo Stray Dogs Dead Apple Volume 1, another spin-off from the main series. Uh, the art looked really nice and so I thought I'd get this as well. Uh, there are so many adaptations for this series, what the heck. Uh, this has to do with some unexplained tragedies that the armed detective agency is tasked to look into and resolve. I'm not sure if there's a reading order for all the spin-offs, but feel free to let me know if there is. Then the Kamisama Kiss Volume 15 reprint. I'm really glad Shoujo Beat's been on top of reprints in the last year for some major well-loved series. Uh, the colors on this cover are so pretty. I love the pastel purple and orange together. And here's Blue Lock Volume 4. I still need to read Volume 3, but I think after the next volume, I'll put a pause on picking up physical copies. I'll probably continue reading, but digitally. Next is Villains Are Destined to Die, Volume 1, with story by Gyor Guan and art by Suol. So sorry if my pronunciation was terrible, uh, but since I don't tend to really get into villainous or isekai stories, I thought I would try with this one because I hear a lot of great things for this manhwa. I, I also wanted to support the print and easy press so that they keep picking up all the manhwa. <laughs> it's pretty gorgeous too, and of course with the full color as you can see. And then last item in this order is this Rooms Art Illustration book by Senbon Umishima that has some comic panels as well as showcasing in everyday girls vibrant rooms that are full of personality. Uh, this is such a beautiful book and I adore Umishima's art style. I have their other book, A Bouquet of a Thousand Flowers, on the way as well, uh, but the cover, the colors, and just this entire book is so visually stimulating. I didn't realize it wasn't translated, but it's totally fine. I'll continue to speed run the flip through so you can see some of the illustrations and how it's formatted. I'm so happy to have this. include these clips of a mini reorganization to put all those volumes away along with some other ones I hadn't talked about and ones I'll pull from my bigger shelves. <laughs> but here's this Anya figure magnet I recently got that I stuck onto my book cart. It's by Little Love Studios that I pre-ordered June of last year. It's just so funny how she's taped down since she's such a menace. And then her expression. <laughs> So my plan is to pull majority of the series that have some sort of drama, mystery, supernatural detective vibes to them and put them on my smaller shelf. Uh, with the exception of a few, like you'll see me pull Mika Yamamori series and Skip and Loper. Those are obviously romance and or slice of life, uh, but the rest will have similar genres to each other. to group everything together. At the bottom is Erased, Summertime Rendering, Monster, Moriarty, and a couple others. Uh, then Something's Wrong With Us, Kalu and Generic Romance, and then Mika Yamamori series and Skip and Loafer. And finally, Bungo Stray Dogs, Toilet Bound Hanako-kun, Phantom Tales of the Night, Apothecary Diaries, and Inspector. I got the Bungo Stray Dogs Volume 22, and this cover is stunning. I love it. It's one of my favorites for sure.
And here is the Japanese Volume 5 of Tokyo Aliens that came with a special book that has illustrations by Naoe. And I do really like that cover and of course this illustration. <laughs> but I'll do a quick flip through of what's inside this special book. to keep that volume 5 with my other Japanese manga since I'm gonna eventually get the English version of volume 5. Here's volume 1 and 2 of In the Clear Moonlit Dusk by Mika Yamamori. I've read the first volume but haven't continued into the next one yet but I'm a fan of her other two series as well, so no doubt I'll enjoy this. The art is great of course, and I just love Yoi's character design and seemingly tough but soft-spoken attitude. Uh, but it centers around Yoi, who is kind of idolized as the prince type at her school, and to be honest, she kind of makes me swoon too. <laughs> She's noticed one day by Kohaku, who takes a liking to her and generally thinks she's beautiful. I'm a bit gutted, like everyone else, that volume 1 was cut much shorter than volume 2, but that's Kodansha for you. So here's how the shell filled out. I'm pretty happy with the series I chose to move over. So for this shelf, I rearranged it. Uh, Aja needs to be back there, but I moved it up front. Uh, move everything over because I may get more noragami the more I read it uh, and so there's just some extra space over there and maybe some Tokyo Revengers depending on how I like it um, and then obviously if I continue to pick up Jujutsu Kaisen there's some room there and then <laughs> I'm not sure if I, I still haven't read Requiem of the Rose King but who knows i mean we may need to rearrange this again because i know this one's also uh quite a few volumes so but for now uh this is what i have on here and then what i'm going to add uh, is these two volumes of shadow house and i'm so happy this shelf is no longer super jam-packed with omnibuses <laughs> I don't think I've talked about Yakuza Fiance yet on my channel, but I have read this first volume and it took me by surprise. It's essentially two Yakuza groups coming together via these two individuals, Yoshino and Kirishima. The dynamic was not what I was expecting, kind of. Considering it's Yakuza centric, it's not too much of a surprise that there's a dark humor to it but there's something about it where I definitely want to see how their twisted relationship moves along. And don't mind that this is next to some super wholesome series. I'm keeping the Yakuza manga together apparently. All these Kamisama reprints they'll be joining those first two volumes. This is an old clip, but I wanted to include this little unboxing of an order I placed with a friend through a group buy. And you can find Summer on Instagram. She was super sweet to include a nice card. Everything was packaged so nicely and secured. Although I was a bit confused because I only ordered two things and not three. But I thought maybe the things I ordered were split up. But my mind went on overdrive when I saw this spine and saw Matsunaga's face through the bubble wrap and through the paper wrapping. Like there he is. <laughs> I love these stickers she used and just so thankful she arranged all this. I've been opening this first and uh, this is a dessert magazine I do not own and can't believe she sent this. 
If anyone doesn't already know, Living Room Matsunaga-san is one of my top favorite manga, but more specifically, Jun Matsunaga himself is like a top, top favorite for me. <laughs> but yeah, I have the one other dessert magazine that has Matsunaga and Miko on the cover, so now I have both. And ah, uh, this is the uh, chapter where they spend half a day at Kittyland. And I really love this colored illustration with all the housemates. I'm totally over the moon to put this on my shelf. Which I think the colors are perfect next to the Horimiya Shikishi. And now here are the items that I ordered. First are volumes 1 and 2 of the Manhua See You in My 19th Life by Hei Li. Same author as A Good Day to Be a Dog. And then these next two volumes were a pre-order that came with a box and then a filler so that you can insert the first two volumes. But while I did enjoy A Good Day to Be a Dog more, uh, this one also has a really interesting concept where Jiyeom has the ability to remember her past lives, uh, but something during her 18th life was so impactful that she tries to reconnect with the people and things she had in that previous life. And now that I'm talking about it, this is very much like an isekai, so <laughs> I'm surprised. <laughs> Every volume has these postcards of the covers, and since 3 and 4 were pre-orders, it came with this photo strip of Doyun and Chuan, which is super cute. So I hope both of Hei Li's series get picked up for translation, most likely by Ise Press, if anything, uh, but these volumes are such a snug fit in this box. <laughs> So I move Watokoi to my creative shelf since Narumi is a doujinshi artist, Hanako cosplays, you know, it kind of fit in theme, <laughs> even though the double stacking looks kind of overwhelming now. Moving on, here's this volume 3 of our Not So Lonely Planet travel guide that I got. I recently read this volume and it made me tear up. It's such a beautiful story of these two guys who are in a relationship and decide to travel the world. If by the end of it they make it through, they'll get married. It's not explicit, so I'd recommend it to everyone. So I didn't film the rest of this shelf reorganization because I was just moving so many things around. Um, but essentially, uh, the reason why is because I wanted to maintain like this area. <laughs> but anyways, I did move uh, these two from the bottom shelf up here and then on this side. I added uh, the two volumes of My Summer of You. Um, down there, that orange logo is our Not So Lonely Planet travel guide. I moved these drama CDs for therapy game on this end and then uh, added classmate six. Here's how the shelves are looking now. My small one filling up so that my other two have a bit more room for ongoing series or other new ones that fit each shelf theme. Uh, thanks for sticking around and also coming back since I did take quite a long break. I was just feeling very stressed and burnt out with work and everything else that was going on. Uh, but I'm back now and have a whole backlog of videos to make. Uh, so I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you in my next video. Take care!